Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototopus Mystery. This will be part 249, and we're continuing, well, <coughs> we're starting with <coughs> a lesson titled, The Case Against Humanity. <coughs> there is an indictment that has been presented against the human race. And we're going to search the scriptures to see the principles of the thing that are <clears throat> going to lead to the coming judgment that's going to fall on the human race. <clears throat> Scripture teaches the cause of man's coming destruction and all of his previous calamities is his failure and unwillingness to seek and accept truth in any form. Hosea, the fourth chapter, verse 6. Straight to the point. <coughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Don't beat around the bush. Please. Please. Isaiah 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. It's not that the human race doesn't have access to knowledge, but that the human race <coughs> rejects pursuing the knowledge it has access to. <coughs> Scripture teaches the human race does not want to hear truth. Isaiah 30, verses 9 to 10. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, would say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophecy not unto us, right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophecy deceits. <coughs> they will not hear, they dig in their heels, deliberately going down to the last gasp, holding on to a lie rather than releasing it to embrace truth. Scripture after scripture after scripture <coughs> enumerate the same thing. Turn to Matthew 13, verses 12 to 15. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given. It's talking about knowledge, wisdom, understanding. And he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. What they had is taken away from them. They're at a point where they, they can't comprehend simple truth. And the Nemes fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall, not, ye shall hear and shall not understand, seeing ye shall see and not perceive. For this people is wax gross, <coughs> corrupt, and their ears are dull of hearing, 
in their eyes they have closed less than any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. Men seek destruction. They're mm. deceived into seeking destruction rather than embracing the truth and being delivered from the destruction of their own doings. So when Jesus tells the <coughs> disciples, <coughs> it's given to you to understand these things, mm -hmm. but it's not given to them. Yes. Is the underlying understanding of him saying that because they're, they're accepting the pseudo reality? Sure. That's yeah. the only reason it's not given to them. Yes, yeah, an act of the will. Look, they're all Israelites. They have the inheritance. Right. They, matter of fact, they could have everything that was promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Plus, he is coming to them with the potential to have the new covenant. They can have the whole thing. All they have to do is receive it. Mm. Yes. So, they have access to the information that, that's been withheld from them, or not? Nothing's been withheld from them. Okay, so, but for, to them, and it's not given to them. It's given to you, but it's not given to them. Because of willingness. Okay, yeah. So, how could, well... Because he knows they won't, right. mm -hmm. whether they they understand or not. So it doesn't matter that they're not giving the information because they're not. They're, no, they're no, 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 no. That's not what he's saying. He's saying <coughs> they could have the same thing that the disciples have, but they don't want it. There's nothing is being withheld. Remember what Lazarus was told in hell by Abraham. Lazarus says, um, <clears throat> not Lazarus, the rich man, says, well, send Lazarus to tell my brothers about this place. Abraham says, they got Moses and the prophets. They can hear everything that they need to hear right there. They don't want to hear it. The same thing is what Jesus is saying. His people could have the same thing. The mysteries of the kingdom is right there. He came to give it to them. They will refuse to receive it. Mr. Jones, that's the only thing that I can ding my bell on. I want this revelation. Mm -hmm. I, I want it, and I'm going to put myself in the receivable position. So, Mr. Jones, there has to be an ingredient that's been added to me called the want gene or want hormone or whatever it is because, Mr. Jones, I am driven. There is no, there, maybe I shouldn't, and maybe I should not. No, 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 I know this is what I have to do, and I want to do it. So therefore, how is it that I can take any credit for that? Praise the Lord. So we find the Lord is talking about the masses of Israel. That they had reached the point where they no longer were open to receive the truth of God, the things of God, and God's Word. Just as the organized religion today has made the same decision. They do not want to receive truth. That's why you get all these twisted, <clears throat> distorted versions of the Bible. That's why you get people that are teaching error deliberately. They do not want to progress in truth. They find that it's more uh, profitable for them to manipulate and distort for their own aggrandizement than to walk in truth. So they are being brought forward toward a state of destruction. But curiously, if the person you just described would be willing to study, they would learn that everything they do is, is complete nonsense. And it has no benefit because it's an eternal existence. They're not willing to go in that direction. Mm. Especially if you're on camera already. <coughs> yeah. You're going to do any research. Yeah. Everything is an avoidance of truth. It's not that people go down to destruction unknowingly. They have made a sovereign decision that takes them straight down 
to oblivion. The scripture of Jones, he says, there is a way that seems right. Now, it's not, they're, they're, that's, a, that's an interesting word, seems. Why is that? Because they know it's not right, but they're not being caught up on it. They're not being judged because they're, they can hide it from man. Not from God, but from man. They can keep, you know, obfuscating, getting clear of taxes and legal things with all the finances that you're getting. But you can hide it from man. You're not getting away. I mean, you're getting away with it, so there's no judgment. So the fear of the Lord is beginning to wisdom. There's no fear. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. There's none of that happening. They're secure and they're doing. They're, they're going about doing it. They're, they can't teach something they don't know. But they have been caught, so they just continue on doing this. And they rationalize. <coughs> they justify in their own minds. <clears throat> but let's go on. <clears throat> Scripture teaches, in times of oncoming danger, they will put their trust in leaders who lead them to destruction. Why? Because they refuse to see truth. Turn to Jeremiah 36, we're going to read verses 1 to 7. The Bible is filled with this same repetitive uh, uh, situation. Here we have the situation with um, Judah being warned of the captivity that they're going to go into, the judgment that's going to come down on them if they don't turn from their way. July 36, we're going to read, excuse me, verses 1 to 7. It came to pass in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, <coughs> the son of Josiah, king of Judah, that this word came unto Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Take thee your roll of a book, and write therein all the words that I have spoken unto thee against Israel, and against Judah, and against all the nations, from the day I spake unto thee, from the days of Josiah unto this day. <clears throat> now, the, the judgment aside was not just for Israel and Judah, it was for the nations around her. Egypt, uh, Babylon, all these nations basically were under the same type of judgment. Invasion and uh, destruction. It may be that the house of Judah will hear all the evil which I purpose to do unto them, that they may return every man from his evil way that I may forgive their iniquity and their sin. Then Jeremiah called Baruch, the son of Neriah, and Baruch wrote from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the Lord which he had spoken unto him unto a roll of a book. So there's a scroll that he's writing and so on. Jeremiah commanded Baruch, saying, I am shut up, I cannot go into the house of the Lord. Therefore, Go thou and read in the roll which thou hast written from my mouth the words of the Lord in the ears of the people in the Lord's house upon the fasting day. And also thou shalt read them in the ears of all Judah that come out of their cities. It may be they will present their supplication before the Lord and will return everyone from his evil way for great is the anger and fury of the Lord that hath pronounced against this people. So he goes and reads. Drop down to verse 11. We read 11 to 16. <clears throat> when Micaiah, the son of Jeremiah, of this, the son of Shaphan, had heard out of the book all the words of the Lord and he went down into the king's house into the scribe's chamber and lo all the princes sat there even Elishama the scribe 
in Delilah, the son of Shemaiah, in Anathan, the son of Ahor, in Gamariah, the son of Shephan, in Zedekiah, the son of Hananiah, in all the princes. Then Micaiah declared unto them all the words that he had heard when Baruch read the book in the ears of the people. Therefore all the princes sent <coughs> Jehoiada, the son of Ner <coughs> Nathaniah, the son of Shal Shalamiah, the son of Cushi, uh, this guy was a black man, <laughs> unto Baruch, saying, Take in thine hand the roll whereof, wherein thou hast read in the ears of the people and come. So Baruch, the son <coughs> of Neriah, took the roll in his hand and came unto them. And they said unto him, Sit down now and read it in our ears. So Baruch read it in their ears. So he's reading to everybody the warning about this judgment. Now it came to pass when they had heard all the words that were and they were afraid, both one and another, and said unto Baruch, We will surely tell the king of all these words. So they hear and they believe. This is, the hammer's going to fall. We better let the king know what's going to take place. Okay? Now, pick it up. Jeremiah 36, 21 to 25. So they have a guy. Take the scroll to the king. So the king sent Judah, Judah to fetch the roll. He took it out of Elishema, the scribe's chamber. And Judah read it in the ears of the king and in the ears of all the princes which stood beside the king. And the king sat in the winter house in the ninth month, and there was a fire on the hearth burning before him. It came to pass, when Jehudah had read three or four leaves, he cut it with the penknife and cast it into the fire that was on the hearth until all the roll was consumed in the fire that was on the hearth. Yet they were not afraid nor rent their garments, neither the king nor any of his servants that heard all these words. Nevertheless, Othanen and Delilah and Garaniah had made intercession to the king that he would not burn the roll, but he would not hear them. So he makes a commandment. We're not going to pay this any attention. I'm the king here. People follow the king's commandment. Rookie mistake. There it is. Fatal mistake. Uh, Let me see if I can find that. Bear with me a moment. Yeah, <coughs> there's a judgment on on uh, <coughs> Jehoiakim. Turn to um, verse 27. We're going to read down. What does the uh, white VH have to say about this? Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, after that the king had burned the roll, and the words which Baruch wrote at the mouth of Jeremiah, saying, Take thee again another roll, and write it in it all the former words that were in the first roll, which Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, hath burned. And thou shalt say to Jehoiakim, king of Judah, Thus saith the Lord, Thou hast burned this roll, saying, Why hast thou written therein, saying, the king of Babylon will certainly come and destroy this land and shall cause to cease from thence a man and beast. So he's saying the king says uh, it ain't happening, basically. Verse 30, Therefore thus saith the Lord to Jehoiakim, king of Judah, he shall have none to sit upon the throne of David, and his dead body shall be cast out in the day to the heat and in the night to the frost. And I'll punish him and his seed and his servants for their iniquity, 
And I will bring upon them and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, upon the men of Judah, all the evil that I have pronounced against them, but they hearken not. Then took Jeremiah another <coughs> roll, gave it to Baruch, the scribe, the son of Neariah, who wrote thereon from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the book, which Jehoiakim, king of Judah, had burned in a fire, and <coughs> there were added beside unto them many like words. They brought more judgment down on them. <coughs> So what happened, <clears throat> people followed the leadership yep. down to destruction. Same thing is happening today. <clears throat> Principle. Scripture teaches is the spiritual leaders that lead God's people astray with their false doctrine. Matthew 23, verse 13. Why was the people's ear not open to hear? Their eye not open to see? Because they were listening to the scribes and the Pharisees. Matthew 23. Verse 13. <clears throat> but woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, play actors, okay. pretenders, <laughs> for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. So he tells, he tells you, you're standing here opposing people that could go in and have access to the promises of the kingdom. Uh, that, that strikes a familiar bell. Very it? familiar, <laughs> indeed. Matthew 15, <clears throat> verses 12 to 14. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? They didn't know what saying. What you, what you told them offended them. Oh, Jesus was really touched. <clears throat> 13. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. In other words, their end it's not going to end well for them. Right? Because the Father's not pleased with their doings. Verse 14. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. It's coming. You want to follow the, uh, the broad way? You want to follow the masses and uh, what the popular teaching of the day happens to be? Just be, you be made aware it's not going to end well. Principle. Scripture teaches at the time of the beginning of sorrows. Judgment. <coughs> at the beginning of sorrows, judgment. Most Christians will be in a state of deception. The blind being led by the blind. Matthew 24, verses 3 to 5. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? That's the first question they ask. And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So what is it going to be that let us know that all of this is 
imminent. What is he doing? This is the first thing he says. Verse 4. Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many, many, many shall come in my name, saying I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now he does, you notice what he says in other in passages of Scripture. He says, False prophets shall arise, false teachers. He doesn't say that about them. Okay. He says, Many shall come in my name declaring a truth, saying I'm Christ. That's true. And shall deceive many. Why? Because they will not teach correct doctrine because they don't want a temporary following. They want a permanent following where the many are continuously being fed by them. Which makes it the next principle. Scripture teaches <clears throat> they will be deceived because they will not want to pursue truth. In other words, they don't want to get into the scripture for themselves. They're content to have somebody teach them whatever it is that that person believes rather than searching to find out the truth of what they're hearing. 2 Timothy 4th chapter, verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. I'm going to repeat that. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. In other words, if you're being the teacher to these people, and you're continuing to teach truth, they're going to reach a point where they won't want to hear it anymore. They're going to find somebody else to teach something that's more palatable <laughs> to them. Yeah. And they're going to find a convenient rationale for doing it. Hmm. Next principle. Scripture teaches Christians who are not alert, in other words, people that walk this path, will come to an end in several <clears throat> different ways, according to their ways. In other words, the thing that caused them to stray is going to be the thing that brings them down to destruction. Jeremiah 25, verse 33. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented, neither gathered nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. <clears throat> Among those are going to be those <clears throat> that were content to continue to pursue destructive doctrines that put them in the zone of danger and wide open judgment. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm for homosexual rights. I'm for gay marriage. Oh, you are? Okay, well, you're coming under this judgment. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Drop down to verse 36. A voice of the cry of the shepherds and then howling of the principle of the flock. <clears throat> For the Lord hath spoiled their pasture. What does that mean? Well, they've been 
experiencing luxurious surroundings up to this point. Riding the high side, receiving uh, all the goodies. Remember, this comes in one day. And in that one day, everything is radically going to change. <clears throat> the shepherds and the principal of the flock, those that have been feeding the creme de la creme, those that have been manipulating the masses, deceiving, having uh, the uh, approval of people because they like what they are hearing in one day. They're going to become denizens of a different habitation in which you're going to hear weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. Now, we see this continue Mark 13, verse 12. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father, the son, and the children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. The lukewarm, patriarchal parent that felt that um, <clears throat> they didn't need to strictly enforce a godly household are going to reap the results of an ungodly household in one day. Finally, Luke 21, verse 35 to 36. as a snare, a net, a trap, shall come on all of them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. In other words, those that are continuing in their <coughs> pursuits are going to be caught doing their pursuits <coughs> in one day, and that's what's going to cause their destruction, their activities that have caused them to be in a position of judgment is going to be the judgment that comes upon them. <clears throat> Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So your activity, your lifestyle, is going to be the thing that determines your destiny. You wanted to hear smooth things. You didn't want to hear truth. You didn't think judgment would fall. You're about your activities, doing what you're doing. Bang, whatever it is, wherever it is, that's the place you're going to end your habitation here and enter into the torment regions of another re reality. Those that are about the master's business are going to be in places in which they're going to be delivered and protected from the judgments that are going to fall on other people who are not. God does all things wisely. <coughs> he says, Praise to be God of worthy, escape all these things. Those that are godly are going to be covered, they're going to be hid. Those that aren't are going to be exposed and wiped out. Simple as that. <coughs> 